Hey, this is an episode solo of me talking to myself, reacting to me talking in a podcast robot voice. So I hope you guys enjoy that. It's really good. I really liked it. Uh, we're doing something fun at the start of every episode. And the fun thing today is I'm going to go like this. Um, okay, enjoy the episode. Yo, this is a good one. This is a doozy. Um, yeah, I talk a lot about how sort of like spiritual teachings are all kind of pointers. Let's start off with, let me get into um, like how, like following your own path and not being dependent on teachers and having this sort of independent sort of intuitive path and what that means and sort of how to do that. Um, and some some complaining in between about different different ways of viewing spirituality, which I don't think are completely appropriate, and of course a bunch of stuff I'm sure that I've that I've missed. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed uh, recording this, and I'm sure I'm going to re enjoy reacting to it too. Um, everything that's kind of like a mm, spiritual teaching or whatever, or you know anything that's actually useful or good or meaningful or like leads to somewhere i feel like people call spirituality it's like anything that's like like spirituality is the only stuff that actually changes things in your life um everything else is kind of just like uh you know it doesn't change anything fundamental or, or like shift anything really it's like um you know just sort of playing with objects and then it's like oh you know all this stuff which actually changes your life for the better and like alters the way you actually are and the way things are for you. Um, oh, we call that spirituality for some reason. Um, is a pointer. So like a, so just to reiterate, I'm saying that all spiritual stuff are pointers. Pointer to something real. It's like by, by telling you this, like something's going to happen, um, uh, which is going to lead to you like having some better access or like a better life or like less suffering in some way. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm really saying here is like, on some level, the way I see everything is it's kind of like uh, the universe is guiding you somewhere. Um, so it's like, it's not about the thing that you're being guided with. It's about where you're being guided to. Um, and it's actually, it's the most important thing is to know when to stop uh, like being attached to the thing that you're being guided with. I ideally, you're never attached to it because then you can just like keep picking up and dropping things or picking up and dropping spiritual teachers or teachings like uh, that are best for you in the situation where you're gradually being guided by the universe towards something good for you. So it's like all of the Buddha stuff is just sort of the Buddha is like figured out how to put things to sort of the mind so that it can suffer less. Uh, and sort of in the same way, you know, it's like, um, and that, that that's, that's like everything that's, that's kind of useful is sort of, yeah, it's kind of pointing you away from words. Yeah. And, uh, it's like everything, everything is just a tool or a device or they call it like an expedient means in, in some of the, the Zen texts. Um, so like everything is just an expedient means to achieve the goal of like less suffering, uh, in spirituality, really. Um, you know, it, the thing isn't capturing concept or dogma. It's not about the thing. It's, it's, it's a tool to get you to get something. Um, and it's not, it's not necessarily like real or whatever. Um, and it kind of always annoyed me when people sort of take that as, as sort of a concept and, and see that as sort of like the, the ideal thing. But like a lot, you, uh, you lose a lot of suffering by detaching from these conceptual narratives is real and detaching from sort of words is real but it's a lot more complicated than just like oh i'm just going to detach from words it's just like not about words or like all of these spiritual teachings are not about words it's like no these are actually like a bunch of different complicated expedient means that have specific uses and tools um which are like needed in order to break through into that place where you're detaching from words and it's like just conceptualizing it as like all spiritual teaching is like just trying to like stop you from using words it's like that's why like in zen like, there's a guy who like just shouted at you um he shouted at some people in particular situations when they were like 
you know, they would say something and he'd shout and interrupt them. And they'd be like, oh yeah, like Zen's just all about like interrupting people so that they stop using words. It's like, no, it was very dependent on the situation and like, uh, like uh, all of the context matters. It's not just that concept that you're thinking. Um, where it's like, oh, like, you know, there's koans, there's like Zen koans, um, and they're saying a bunch of extremely sort of specific, mm, important stuff. Uh, that's really useful in a bunch of specific ways. You know, it's leading you, leading you into a bunch of specific places. Um, in order to be useful, like a bunch of very complicated pointers to a bunch of different things, uh, which are all useful in their own way. But then, if you sort of take that as the concept, and you're like, oh, it's like they're pointing to things outside of words. That means like not words. Not words is the truth. It's like, uh, and uh, all of Zen is just about you know not words. Um, and this is a really essential point, which I really want to hammer home, which is why I'm doing it. Um, you know, as soon as you conceptualize something like that, and you move away, then you then you're leaving this world where you're being guided by the universe. You're conceptualizing it. You're like, no, this is the thing. You're attaching to it, and like you're you're not able to be guided anymore because now you now you've got this binary this duality where you're like oh no it's this thing and it's not this other stuff but that's not how that's not how reality works it's just more complicated than that it's like the the reality that we're living in um is 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 sort of composed of words and concepts and like narratives and stories as like human beings um but you can't you know, work through that reality, you can't sort of uh, realize truths about that reality or sort of detach from it by sort of just drilling the no words thing uh, sort of mindlessly or without without intuition or without sort of uh, guidance or even, you know, without without sort of like a commitment to like what's actually true and like real for you right now. Uh, and this is something that like Foyan said, He's great. I love Fuen. But he was like, um, you know, uh, you guys just sit on, in your meditation, like, just destroying your thoughts. Like, how are you ever going to fucking attain anything like that? <laughs> um, because that's just another concept, um, which isn't going to be useful. Yeah. I mean, I really, really like this, this thing that I said here. It's like... Concepts are just not the not the thing, and like be guided by the universe. So it's kind of like uh, spiritual truths, as well as you know real world events where we're sort of we're going through our lives and we see a synchronicity or a message or are guided, feel guided somehow. It's like they're only useful until they're not useful anymore. They're not true. They're not like the words are never gonna like sort of capture something true. And then be a useful reference point. It's like dogma just isn't isn't a good thing. It just isn't real. Um, and that's that's what concepts are, right? They're dogma. And that's sort of how you can trust these uh, spiritual teachers. It's like uh, you know, you can trust them until until you get led to a good place. And when it stops leading you to a good place, you can stop walking. <laughs> you know, you can stop following them. And that's that's the thing. It's like um, just sort of having concepts and words in your head is, on some level, um, uh, sort of integrating this uh, authority system where you're relying on on the concepts and words to guide you. It's it's sort of like this patriarchal sort of authority where you're sort of subservient to to the concepts and words, no matter what you're feeling, no matter what you think is best in the situation. Um, and it's like teachers who are not instilling that like rule-based authority system inside of you where you have to rely on concepts that that's the ones that you want to listen to um it's like as soon as uh as soon as some like expression of a person that's captured into a conceptual framework um in any in any way it loses its potency because its potency is in guiding you towards things and then being discarded it's like a, a, one of the biggest parts of like um you know spiritual teachings being useful is detaching like detaching from them them being able to be detached from 
Um, and that's actually a really... It's a skill. It's a skill. And it's one that I think I've cultivated. It's like you, you give people things that are going to get them somewhere and that they're also able to detach from. Like, you don't give them a... The people in Zen said all the time in the Blue Cliff record. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but yeah, it's like giving, giving like a, a you know, I, I like buried you in the mud or whatever. It's like not burying someone in the mud is pretty important when you're telling them or giving them advice. <laughs> it's like uh, if you can't sort of follow follow a thread and then detach from it at the end, then it's not it's not it's not useful. It's another like chain. It's like stopping you from being as free as you could be because you believe that stuff's real. So it can be really fucking dangerous to um, sort of uh, understand things conceptually, because the more you the more you understand things conceptually and sort of see see what people are saying as uh, sort of a rather than sort of a message from the universe to guide you to a particular point until you can detach from it, you see it as like an eternal truth that is is always good. It's like it's um that creates a duality, you know that creates like. Oh, this thing or not this thing? It's like oh, like awareness or not awareness. I'm either aware, or I'm not aware. Um, and every single like conceptual fabrication, which is in that format, where it's like oh, there's like a bee and there's other people, or there's like thought and then there's things that aren't thoughts. These things are true. These things aren't true. None of those none of those frameworks work well. Or actually, sort of navigating reality in a in a peaceful sort of free way. Because when you like to navigate reality in a peaceful sort of free way, you have to be adjusting to the circumstance uh, without conceptualizing it. So as soon as you sort of conceptualize anything, you're holding on to things from the past that aren't present in in the present. So you, you're holding on to things in the past that aren't present in the present. Uh, and then, you know, something happens which can be captured in your uh, duality frameworks and, you know, you get thrown off. It's like, what the fuck? Like, this doesn't make sense. And this this is happening. It's like this whole, like, um, sort of trusting that you're being guided and detaching from things as, as they come. You know, you could you could put this on a macro level in your life, like, you know, like quitting your job when you feel intuitively guided to and... Or you could do it on a, a micro level. It's like every single thought is like that. It's like no thought is a concept that you're attached to. It's like everything's sort of just a guide to get you to somewhere or every sensation. Uh, this isn't real or whatever. Um, so the the like the best move always would be to have no no conceptual thinking going on because then basically you're you're harmonized with what the reality is at the time without having to think about it. Like you're already. You're already just like a perfect part uh, of what everything is, and so you can respond. You can respond perfectly to the situation because you're not um, uh, because you're not uh, conceiving yourself out of the situation. It's like as soon as you start conceiving, you're outside of the real situation. Um, and whenever you're not conceiving, you're in you're in the real situation because like what's actually going on is is never is never conceptual. It's like these, like, um. So what I'm saying here, it, it really is like you're always you're always like just this reality, this reality which is not conceptual. Um. And of course you are right. Of course you aren't. You're not gonna. You're not the things that arise and pass. That's obvious, right? Um. Because then you'd be you'd be appearing and disappearing all the time there is this solid sort of uh reality which has been there before you were conceptually thinking and after you after you started conceptually thinking um and as soon as you start conceptually thinking you leave that reality you're no longer part of it um you're like separating yourself from it and like i, I think this is just kind of obvious it's like if you if you don't separate yourself from the thing that you already are without conceptualizing then you're harmonized with reality, right? Because you're not separating yourself from it. Words that we construct to make sense of things and communicate to others are, you know, they're useful uh, for communication <laughs> and sort of, yeah, like a, they're almost like a, like a, yeah, like a pointer and in, in a pointer, we can imagine a, a direction. Um, and it's kind of like, go that way. And we're creating a, we're creating a signal 
along a direction for people to orient to. So say that someone was going like this way, and we were like that way, then they could go like, you know, you know, and start, or start orienting that way a bit more. And obviously, you know, they need to be like pointed in a bunch of different ways to get to like a good place. But it's, that's kind of, that's kind of what like, um, teaching, teaching is it, it, in my experience. It's like, oh, like they're going down this direction and like that direction doesn't seem great. Like I've been down that direction <laughs> and it's not very useful or good. Um, so like, let me just tell them about a different direction or like a different way to go, which might be useful. Um, And uh, what I'm talking about here really is this idea. It's like if you, it's like you're navigating a like a 3D maze, but all the walls are invisible. Um, so like uh, that's kind of what I mean. Like like giving giving someone a direction. It's like to get through a maze. It's like you know you want to go up. Okay, now you want to go right, and it's like giving someone like a concept. It's like um, you know focus on focus on your breath. Okay, and then you go right. It's like okay now, but now look, realize that you're like the universe or whatever, and that's just examples or like follow like the teaching of Yuji Krishnamurti. Okay, now follow like Lisa Karen cards, um, and that's like giving someone a direction, but they're they're like navigating this like maze, where eventually they're gonna get to somewhere somewhere good. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure if that made sense. And it's useful, it's useful until, you know, another direction's better. And that's kind of this sort of like adjusting to the situation thing, which I'm talking about. Yeah, and you know, you're kind of picking up on these directions uh, intuitively, ideally, like, or you're being guided, yeah, by uh, intuition where it's like, oh, like this way, yeah, like this way is better or like this way is better based on, yeah, just what you, what you feel is right. And you know that's a, and, and you know it's never going to be captured by a concept because a concept only knows what's happened like before. A lot of a lot of Buddhist institutions they're kind of they're kind of dogma dogmatic. It's like, yeah, you know, we sit this way, um, we think about this thing or don't think about this thing. We do our we put our minds in this position, um, you know, and then and then we you know we we adhere to these these teachings which were someone said once. Um, and it's like, how is that ever gonna, how is that ever gonna work? Like, that's so, it's so stale. It's so, like, uh, not, um, adjusted to the modern climate or the modern mind or anything. Uh, it's like a frag fragment of the past, which isn't alive anymore. And, you know, I bet it, I bet it was alive when there was, like, this master around who was like, hey, like, you know, he's kind of guiding people at the time, according to his discernment, to go a particular way. Uh, and maybe that's really useful at the time. Um, but like every single Chinese Zen master, at least, is like, hey, yeah. And then what I'm really saying here is like, you know, if you have, if you have like all of these um, practices and like words and like things that like an enlightened person said at a time were really, really great at the time because they had that sort of aliveness, that active guiding based on intuition for the people involved. Um, they're probably not so great for later on. Uh, but that said, you know, if you can energetically connect to them, you feel something moving in your body and it's like the right direction for you right now, that's great. It's like, just don't calcify it. You know, uh, like, and now I'm talking about Chinese, how Chinese have asked his uh, attitude to practice, which I really like. Like, do do whatever practices you want. Um, like, if you want to, if you want to do, pra like, if there's an occasion for the practice, then do it. Otherwise, you know, just don't bother. Um. Yeah, and, and Bankai Bankai Yutaku especially, it was like, hey, you know, like they they like to walk around with the incense and they like to do a sitting meditation. So we that's that that that's what they do. You know, it's just fun. Like whatever's fun for them. Um. And but like this realizing the unborn mind thing, that's a different story. <laughs> you know, and you can kind of do that whenever. Like you don't need to do these practices. And you know, that's definitely that's definitely what I think is a much more appropriate perspective it's like following your intuition to understand what's appropriate at the time and also like it's like hey like oh wow every time i read uh you know yuji krishnamurti uh i i get like this uh movement of energy in my like heart and then afterwards i feel great and i like love people more and you know i feel more especially awake and it's like okay keep doing that <laughs> you know until that stops being a thing um
and that's kind of um and then you know eventually you're gonna build up for your for yourself a um sort of a way of being in the world where you're noticing intuitively these things that you can do to make your life better and relieve your own suffering and you're just following following the threads all the time and that's the ideal right is that you're you're able to first of all i guess detect like what's going on for you or what has worked for you or what is working for you and then you're able to follow follow those threads um without without you know needing money or uh you know the Sat while while being able to satisfy like the material conditions for that stuff to happen, uh, it's kind of what I am working on right now. <laughs> it's like, hey, it was kind of intuitively good to do some things that need money better, earn some of that. Um, yeah, my energy sessions are going really well. <laughs> They're great. I really like them. And like, uh, uh, I'm completely, I'm completely lost. I, I had to like a pause here and I have to like fill the words. I didn't have anything to say. I was thinking about, I was like interfacing with goddesses and gods and mother earth. Um, and now I'm at a loss. What was I even saying? And like, when you look at the people who are successful in like monastic traditions, it's like, yeah, they just, they became a monk. It's like that, that's what they felt was good for them. And then they were successful by doing that because they like you know followed a bunch of different practices that were that were good for them. Yeah, I, you know, all I'm saying is like people who are successful are intuitively following what's good for them, and that can look like a bunch of different conceptual things where it all makes sense, but actually for them it didn't make sense, and it doesn't make sense. And like just sort of copy pasting them. They're like th like conceptualizing what they did and then copy pasting it for yourself is never going to work because you have a whole different body mind. It's gonna be just completely different. Um, and if that's if that's the case, that's amazing, right? But it's like it's if you're like you know, uh, two years ago you were doing astral projection and you felt like a huge like spiritual shift, uh, and it was like doing going really really well for you. And then right now it's like and then and then you're like ah you know, but everyone says to do um zazen or i know everyone says to do like this thing where you just focus on your breath so i'll just do that instead like that seems better uh, and then it like never works and then you know just do the actual projection thing that works <laughs> and i feel like this is kind of um this is kind of uh sort of a mechanism that normal society uses to keep you in its grip which is kind of like you know oh you're doing something which is uh, good for you personally, but isn't verified by authority or um, other people, then don't do it. Yeah, it's weird. It's like it's like if your thing is new and doesn't have an existing template, then you shouldn't do it. And it's so wrong. Uh, and that's kind of like and and the idea is like, oh no, you don't have any authority or power. The system has authority or power. Like the concepts have authority and power. Like the system of authority is is what determines what's good. So you should listen to that system of authority. And that's just not real. Imagine school doesn't help with this at all, you know? You know, that's a fake, fake system invented by humans uh, in order to have power over individuals who really know, know what's best for them. Like, everyone, everyone already knows what's, in, what's good for them and what's the, what the best thing to do is right now and what's intuitively best. That it's just sort of, when they can identify that in their body and stop relying on these concept like, treating these conceptual systems as uh, uh, systems of authority that they should always follow, it's like, then they, they start living a better life. Uh, and you can kind of see that kind of system play out in a lot of different ways, where it's like, oh no, like, let's just take away power from... All these individuals who are really smart and capable and can sort of intuitively tell what's best for them and you know give them a bunch of things that first of all you know make they make them believe in these like uh places of authority like spiritual places of authority or mm, material places of authority and yeah like just just follow what what we say and it's sort of like yeah like just by giving up your power and following what uh, institutions or mm, you know authorities say like they're already kind of winning because that's that's sort of the market of uh of consciousness it's like how much consciousness can we affect by or like control you know how much consciousness can we get you know on on top of our sort of a uh, uh you know propagating our our signal which is like their their signals of a uh, authority and that's the thing it's like that uh what i'm saying really is you know 
conceptual thinking and like relying on it as an authority it's a it's a tool for control by uh you know you're you're more easily controlled much more easily controlled when you're trusting in concepts and like what people have told you is the good thing to do and like yeah these like solidified thoughts um but compared to when you're just listening to yourself and what you think is best and sort of doing what's what's intuitively correct um and that's i feel like that's just kind of obvious it's like uh you know if you're relying on things outside of your own intuitive guidance then um people can manipulate those things in order to control you you know it's like and then so you know a teacher you know can convince of it like maybe like 50 people that they have authority or power and that they that the, the students don't have power and then those students you know tell other people and then those the students of those tell other people and you know it's like this uh yeah it's like a viral mechanism to sort of influence people into giving power to particular sort of signals or people uh over others and that's the thing when when you believe in these concepts when you believe in a concept then you become a, a receiver and repeater of that signal and then you start spreading that concept be, being real and that causes a lot of suffering yeah like if you if you believe that uh meditation is the only way to get enlightened or or like even if you just believe in like what some teacher has told you and then you're spreading it around as, as a concept you know you're being a signal repeater for that that concept uh you know and ideally you're you're a signal repeater instead for like mm, just following like whatever whatever your body or uh whatever you feel is right whatever feels uh, best at the time you know you don't want to be someone who's uh you know spreading these uh Mm, you know signals of like this this person or concept is an authority uh you know those those aren't useful for for anyone apart from that authority and i feel like people i mean i don't know i mean maybe it's just they're sort of intuitively figuring out like how to do it but i you know it's definitely something which happens a lot um you know i see a lot of a lot of people sort of uh spreading around these um signals which are which are kind of like I'm the authority and like trust me and trust my ideas yeah. or, or concepts and um you know and everything else is is kind of wrong like you're wrong don't trust yourself I think that's how you can spot you can spot people who are um doing this power authority thing and you can spot people who are doing this like hey no like you follow your own path and like you intuitively know what's best and just do what what you intuitively know is best and like maybe here's some tools which would be useful for you to like try out. Maybe these would be good for you. Um, like and di diagnosing on the ground, it's like oh, like you you kind of believe this, and like maybe if you look at it this way, then you'll see that you have more power and more independence. Uh, like there's no codependence. Um, that's sort of one. And then there's the other person who's like, hey, like you're bad, and I'm good, and what I'm saying is good, and you don't know what's good, so just do what I'm saying. Um, like uh. I see I see that with Bentino Masaru a bit. <laughs> he was very like he's very like uh you know, here's here is a bunch of stuff. Like you you need to you need to step up. Like it's time to stop being a shit person and it's time to be a good person like me. Uh it's like stop stop being low vibrational, be high vibrational. It's like no, what if low vibrational is uh appropriate? Also what are you talking about? Um Yeah, so it's sort of like these uh no noticing when people are affecting uh your sort of internal culture your way your way of viewing yourself where it's like they're sort of um you know creating these authority structures or, or sort of power structures or uh and then you know put placing you inside of them uh rather than someone who is sort of giving giving power to you and, and yeah like guiding you to uh like identifying your own power and seeing that you know you're you're all you need is uh, already present in your experience especially spiritually um and like you're able to do it yourself it's like there's there is a distinction there between those those two kinds of people uh and, you know obviously that's, that's a binary right and you know one one person could say something which is very like giving power uh and then in the next moment they could you know sort of in, try and influence you into being in a power structure but 
Yeah, it's like be, being very careful about what we mm, uh, not only take in as as like a signal, but also what we like propagate. It's like if you really believed in sort of those kind of structures and what this person was saying, and then started uh, spreading spreading that around, then it not only does it become more uh, sort of like uh, does your does your sort of internal self become more influenced it's like the more you the more that you try to influence others into that way of thinking the more you influence yourself into it so it can be really dangerous to yeah believe the wrong people and i feel like that's kind of why you like every single like the buddha and like all of the zen masters you know people who really get it they're like you know find find like true true good friends and like true good friends are like people who are enlightened basically it's like just talk to them don't talk to anyone else um, and I, I feel like that's actually, even though it seems like a power structure, it's like, uh, or like a paradox. It's like, oh yeah, just trust the people who tell you to trust yourself. It's like, it's not a paradox actually. It's like, uh, uh it's like these people are going to able, be able to, infl like if, you, if you're in the position where you feel like you need to listen to people or, or like have someone help you, it's like, get help from the people who are going to give power back to you. Uh. And like not not try to and like you know tell tell you things which guide you back to your own experience, like that's extremely extremely valid. Like Yuji Krishnamurti was very like that. He's like, yeah, you know, leave. <laughs> like you won't get anything from me, you know. And I, 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 I that's perfect. Yeah. I feel like I've pretty much said everything that I wanted to say, at least in this reaction. <laughs> I just, I'm just stalling time now, waiting for, waiting for me to catch up with uh, whatever I wanted to say next. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to check out these Zen masters that I'm always talking about, um, Instant Zen, Waking Up in the Present, this is Foyan. He's really great. Um, uh... Then teaching of Hugh High. This is great. Hugh High is great. He said some really good stuff. Um, he's got an absolute classic uh, banger. Sorry, one second, me. You can... Um, question: What method must we practice in order to attain deliverance? Answer: It can own, it can be attained only through a sudden illumination. Question: What is a sudden illumination? Sudden means ridding yourselves of deluded thoughts instantaneously. Illumination means the realization that illumination is not something to be attained. Beautiful. Um, and uh, Hang Po, the Zen teaching of Hang Po, absolute fucking classic. You can see this kind of stuff energetically as well. So if you, uh, you can if you if you become aware of your energy body uh, in a, then you can you can kind of notice where, um energies may be feeling sort of blocked or contracted or scared or unsafe um and you can kind of identify like oh wait like this energy kind of has a story about it which is like it's it doesn't feel like it has power it feels like it needs to rely on someone else and there's sort of this uh practice which you can do which is like oh this energy like is sort of uh taking in energy from someone else and I can I can like send back that energy. So I'm saying that when you're when you're dependent on sort of concepts or people, um, you can actually see in your body which energy, which parts of yourself, which um, which energetic entities, uh, which are intelligent, uh, feel like they need to rely on other people or concepts, and then you can sort of um, uh, disconnect that that sort of energy connection and allow them to sort of stand on their own and usually the energy that's sort of like from the other person that's making them feel restrained or contracted will just like leave if you just open up the door back to that person to to the person that it's coming from and it's kind of a it's like it, when your when your energy body feels like it's not able to be independent it creates a dependency and that dependency is is the same as like processing someone else's energy for them so like you say you're talking to mm, someone like a narcissist or something i don't know like a parent or, or, mm, i don't know like a someone that you don't like someone you're dependent on 
<laughs> then you can say, "Hey," but then and they're like, "Oh no!" Like I'm, I, uh, like I'm so like. Into so just give me an example of when someone might instigate a kind of dependence, energetic dependence. Secure. It's like I need, like I need you to, basically like a. Like figure this out for me. Like I, I don't have, I don't have independence. Like I am not able to do this by myself. I need you to do it for me. Like I have this feeling or or energy, and like I can't deal with it myself. I need you to deal with it for me. That's kind of the format of like you're giving up your independence, and then making your body process their energy, and they're giving up their independence too, and you're creating this parasitic connection. Um, then that can create this sort of energetic link, where they're sort of uh putting energy into you uh to process but they're not they're not solving any of the like core problems which are generating that sort of energy which is not not great for the human body and that generator is in their body not yours so you're never going to be able to help them with the generator you only ever help, help them with the result and helping them with the result takes the form of them just pumping energy that they don't want into your body for you to work through um so it's really really important that's like another reason why it's really important uh to yeah, not foster sort of codependency. It's like the reason that I, the reason that I'm very like, hey, you know, you can do it yourself and, uh, uh, you know, be be independent and not trying to make dependencies is because I don't want to, uh, I don't want anyone to be processing my energy for me, and I don't want anyone, and I don't want to be processing anyone's energy for for them, because I I think it's it's just a lot more efficient. It's just a lot more. It's a lot better. It's a lot more optimized for, for each individual person to be working through their own stuff, and not using other people's bodies as like storage units for excess energy. It's like, sort of the more the more that you make yourself dependent on other people, the harder it gets to see what your own problem is, because you can you because you're not. It doesn't have much, as much energy to it anymore because they're like processing it for you. Well, if you have, what well, if you get rid of those dependencies, all of a sudden it becomes very obvious that like, oh, there's a problem in my body and I like need to solve it. And like the thing you're doing before wasn't a solution. It was a, <laughs> you know, it was a sort of a stopgap, which mm, sort of abuses other people. And these kind of dependencies, they can, they can come up, you know, even, even, even with people who aren't uh, trying to do them explicitly, like one moment of like a conversation where somebody says something and you're like oh you know and you just sort of intend to help them with it uh like so that they don't have to do it themselves you know that can create this kind of energetic link so yeah it can really help if you do have that energetic awareness to sort of go into your your body and like be like oh which which energy here doesn't feel like it's mine like what energy here doesn't feel like it's mine and also like what energy here feels like it needs to rely on other people or what energy here feels like um it's not able to be sort of it's not able to figure things out by itself uh, it can be extremely useful <sighs> and you know it's part of you know, it can help uh, uh uh if you don't have the energetic awareness i hate to say it you know book a session with me <laughs> I'll I'll be able to notice things which aren't yours that can go back to people. Um, you can definitely do it yourself if you can. What I what I do, I mean, all I do is I just feel into my body, and then I'm like, like different energy just feels like it's someone else's, and I just open up the connection back to them, which is just all you have to do is intend for it to open. And I mean, I don't, I just don't know if people can do that with just me saying it, and I hope they can. I think that'd be great if they can, but in my experience, energy stuff generally is a lot easier to pick up um, when someone is sort of doing it with you uh, on like a video call or in person compared to like watching a video of someone telling you to do something. Um, and that's just, that's just my experience. And it's sort of like when we're talking um, on video or whatever, we're creating this shared awareness space where we're both kind of aware of the same things. And that uh, expands your awareness and makes you realize like, oh, like, not only is it possible to do these things, it's, the things like, that... it's like how it's possible to do these things. And yeah, um, I mean, I definitely recommend if you do, if you are able to do it yourself, like to find energy that isn't yours and to send it back to people, to, to the people that it came from.
but I guess, yeah, don't be too worried if it's not working just based on this video. It's hard to do based on a video. I find really useful still. Uh, there's a couple of things. Okay, a couple of things I find really useful still. Um, the first one is uh, like feeling into my heart um, and being like, what is my heart? Like, what should I, like, what is the thing to do here? And sort of inquiring, inquiring from the heart. Um, the heart is, is extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, and it, it like doesn't rely on conceptual thinking. Um, so sort of use like trusting it more, trusting your heart and what your heart feels and, um, what it, what it thinks is best. Um, I have always found that really useful. Um, and in, in, in a similar vein, it's like another thing I found really useful all the time is just going for walks and, and, uh, sort of feeling into or inquiring into different things just intuitively based on whatever whatever seems appropriate um like if you want to sort of have a uh toolkit for an independent intuitive uh path it's like that's that those are pretty pretty good it's like what does your heart feel is good to do um like quitting your job or or maybe uh you know leaving leaving a relationship that you're in and you know and and that's the thing it's like spirituality isn't isn't so um contained it's like that's kind of another problem with sort of uh uh conventional uh views of views of spirituality or spiritual practice or whatever it's like oh yeah so you know i do spiritual practice now and then after that like i go to work for eight hours uh this is just a concept right if you're conceptualizing spirituality and you're conceptualizing it as a different thing from normal reality then all of a sudden it's it's just terrible and it's you're you're you've like calcified it into this weird thing that isn't real it's like it's always just about reality and reality is always there and I, i'm not spiritual at all during that time and you know in this relationship i'm spiritual but in, in this one i'm not and it's like all of it it's like there's no real distinction between um like spiritual stuff and not spiritual stuff it's like it's all it's all reality and it's all interconnected and all in independent interdependent um and your heart is very aware of that fact. So when your heart tells you, it's like, hey, like this thing would be good for you, which would be, you know, something which you might consider to be maybe conventional, normal reality. It's like, hey, like that's a good pointer. It's like, hey, like it's not life isn't 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 contained into these separate containers. Uh, you, know, you have to always be working on the ground, always be working on with what you have right now, with your present experience, with with what's actually going on for you. Um, you know, you can't ever be working from this assumption that like oh it's like no this stuff doesn't count it yeah and uh, what i'm saying is you know uh if you're stuck in that concept of like oh man you know some things are good and some things are bad basically and like spiritual stuff is good for this and normal reality is bad bad for spiritual stuff or whatever um trusting your heart your heart doesn't exist in those binaries so trusting your heart is a good way to like guide you out of that and to realize that everything's interconnected because your heart is knows everything's interconnected already and um it will help you realize that because you'll do things that are good uh that aren't fitting in your binaries if you trust it it's you know that's a duality obviously that's a duality it's like oh this this stuff this stuff uh is is this thing and this other stuff is this other thing and some things apply to one side of it and the other, other things don't apply to the other side of it it's like as soon as you start thinking like that you know you're you're immediately in a, in big trouble <laughs>
This was a really good episode, I feel like. Um, I do hope you guys did enjoy it. <clears throat> I think a lot of it's super relevant and good. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing uh, uh, if, you've, if you've watched this far, then you liked it. So please feel free to share it with anyone who you think would also appreciate it, you know, in terms of like... This is sort of, in, it feels intuitively good to guide someone to this video. Like, it just is kind of coming up a lot. Um, then pl please do, right? Like, uh, anyway, peace. Thank you.